joining us uh, to this uh, virtual exchange this morning. My name is uh, Thomas Bielmeier and I'm Eco's person in Brussels. Today you will not hear so much of me as the focus lies on uh, my two guests. Um, it will be even more focused on them as usually. However, let me give you a brief introduction on the upcoming 30 to 45 minutes. Today we want to focus on a topic uh, many people think of first if they hear eco ecology or the environment and sustainability. And we're going to mix it with the origin of the Internet Association's name, e-commerce, in a wider sense, the ICT industry. Technology offers a huge potential when it comes to finding solutions for today's problems on energy consumption and environmental pollution. Smart or smarter cities help to reduce traffic, accidents and energy consumption with the use of 5G and artificial intelligence, AI. Smart homes can turn on your appliances or charge your car when consumption is generally lower. Mobile solutions facilitate the use and thereby allow the spread of shared commodities like bikes or cars. All in all, the potential seems huge. And um, money um, is uh, being made available, but the clock is ticking. So let's talk about the chances and opportunities, the risks and where to start. To do that, we have two special guests who I would like to welcome to our virtual fireside. I'm very happy and honored that Daniel Mays, member of the cabinet of the EU Commission's Executive Vice President Franz Timmermans has accepted our invitation to continue the exchange we had in November on the sustainability of data centers in a more relaxing environment. Thank you very much, Daniel, and a warm welcome. But an exchange needs at least two people, and you're in luck, it won't be me. But I'm happy that ECO's chairman of the board, Oliver Zume, is going to bring, in, bring his experience and knowledge onto the screen. Thank you also for joining, Oliver, and welcome to the virtual fireplace. The event will be recorded and made available on our webpage afterwards. We, we invite you to participate actively by using the questions window. We will have a Q&A at the end of the event. If you mention a name and affiliation, it makes it more personal. And please make sure to let us know who you would like to address your question to. Well, I said you won't hear or see too much of me, so let me hand over the microphone to Oliver and Daniel and start them off with a question. Where would you see the biggest need for initiative by the ICT industry to Daniel? And where would you see the biggest need for an initiative uh, by the European Union to Oliver in regard to the Green Deal to reach the ambitious targets? Oliver, Daniel, the floor is yours. Do you want to go first, Oliver? Yeah. The microphone, Oliver. I'm happy to start, Daniel. Thanks. And uh, Thomas, very uh, thank you as well for uh, the introduction and welcoming everyone. So yeah, where does um, the industry sees um, the biggest challenges? Um, where do we see the most important fields of action um, on a political level? Um, the Green Deal was already mentioned. And uh, indeed, I believe that this double challenge um, of um, the general um, digital transformation of society and e economy on the one hand side, combined um, with a transition into a sustainable ICT and digital economy um, is a huge challenge for the industry. Um, we have basically welcomed the plans that have been outlined with the Green Deal because we really believe this is the right um, path and direction um, to take. Um, however, it is, um, of course, very challenging, at least for parts of the industry. And uh, for example, from a German perspective, um, we have um, uh, completely different energy costs and energy plans with regard to the phase out of coal air energy, for example, than other member states and also not in line um, with um, the clima neutral um, digital economy as requested by the Commission by 2030. For example, um, in Germany, the phase out of uh, the coal energy is planned for only um, 2035 to 2038. So there's a gap that uh, the industry needs to manage, but also maybe the commission needs to manage and take into account um, different um, energy situations and a different energy um, cost situation, also different um, energy tax situations um, in different member states. Um, and that is maybe something where we can start the discussion from. Um, again, uh, we're basically uh, very 
uh, much in favor with these plans. However, we see um, a lot of challenging in, in different parts um, of the um, ICT industry. Yeah, no, like, uh, thanks a lot for that. And uh, I think that it's sort of also captures, I can really mirror some some of this of what you said, like also from, from our side, because I think that uh, from from the government side, and I'm not speaking for a, uh, a government level, like the European Commission, and of course, far more, uh, Germany and, and uh, even the local communities also all relevant uh, here. And uh, would have also given this, this, this double message, because as I always uh, say, um, the European Green Deal is really also really a call to arms for uh, digital technology uh, to help us achieve these goals of the European Green Deal. I'm wholly convinced that there is no Green Deal without a digital deal. Uh, because if you talk about the, uh, the the field of energy that you just mentioned, that this huge energy transition that we need to make across uh, the European continent to reach our climate uh, goals, in, or, in order to avoid that you uh, would end up with, uh, you know, oceans full of uh, uh, wind farms and uh, solar panels everywhere, you need digital technology to make your energy grid smart so that you make the best use of uh, of the installations that, that you do have. So I'm wholly convinced next to the examples that were mentioned, already mentioned on uh, the uh, smart mobility that is in the uh, it's also a promising uh, area that we don't have a green deal without a digital deal. So this is really a call to arms also to um, investments uh, in, in digital technology to help us master this uh, bigger transition. And then, of course, the, the second part of the message is indeed also to work on the sustainability footprint of uh, of the technology itself. And I do think that uh, 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 now uh, progressively you're seeing when we come out with our big uh, political uh, uh, plans uh, this week, we will come out with a, a plan on artificial intelligence, uh, for example. You really see that double message coming back that we want to see investments in, in digital technology that helps us achieve, achieve our climate goals but we need to work on this sustainability footprint um, at the same time as well uh, because we need to invest uh, together in a in a way that we answer our collective responsibility to make sure that um, by 2030 we don't end up in a result that uh, oh whilst whilst we were doing this uh, digital technology actually increased the emissions rather than uh, bringing them down uh, everywhere else um, so that is a bit uh, my uh, main message today yeah, you mentioned AI and the um, well, the next steps with regard um, to to the the draft that we are expecting uh, very soon. Um, I think that's re really one of the important masterpieces um, on the legislative um, agenda for the next years. Um, artificial intelligence is not only an important factor with regard to um, a sustainable digital economy but also, as we believe, one of the key technologies um, that enables the European um, economy um, in general uh, to, to recover from, well, the, the increase and the difficulties many sectors currently have due to the pandemic. Um, so, so we need digital technologies in order to catch up um, and to, and I, I believe that AI really is one of the key technologies in order to um, foster this transition that we need um, more urgently uh, than ever. Um, we, we carried out a study, by the way, for at least the German economy um, last year, um, and that came to the result that um, AI will be one of the key driver to um, the general growth of the economy, and that will lead to a situation in Germany where um, the part of the um, turnover um, of, of the GDP of the ICT industry can raise from like 4.2% now up to more than 7% in the next five years for Germany alone. And that would be um, one uh, of, the, of the key effects of AI. Um, maybe that is transferable to the whole um, European market. So that is really one of the uh, key technologies. And we're excited to see the plans of uh, the commission in that regard. Um, some things have already been leaked and we saw some general directions in, in the white paper that has been um, published. Um, and I think what is most important here is that we have an innovation, innovation friendly framework um, that finds the right balance between um, consumer protection, um, protection of um, civil society, but also an innovation friendly environment for our business who are developing such technologies.
Um, yes, indeed. Like uh, I, I'm also convinced that you know, once you have the digital infrastructure and also the data, that actually artificial intelligence is uh, the next frontier to really start uh, transforming parts of your uh, society. Because, uh, um, well, uh, as you say, it's, it matters for society as a whole. You know, if we, if we really get the the machine learning uh, right and uh, the right uh, algorithms and decisions coming out of these. Uh, AI models and also uh, continuous learning, you can also really revolutionize the way that we uh, find cures for diseases and uh, uh, set diagnoses. Uh, uh, so in a pandemic, that is also really a very important uh, uh, benefit uh, there. Uh, you're absolutely right that, uh, uh, that there's a balance to be found. And uh, well, you will have also seen from some of the uh, drafts that were already circulating uh, before they will be uh, formally presented uh, this week uh, that um, yeah, there is uh, there is uh, this uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, work ongoing. Like uh, uh, the, the proposal will be to 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 see a bit which 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 uses of artificial intelligence also bring some risks, uh, be it for the safety of consumers or uh, health or fundamental uh, rights, and only to focus a bit on these high risk areas and then to see whether uh, providers of uh, artificial intelligence solutions can work with. Uh, yeah, making sure that they can do conformity assessments uh, to make sure that they manage these risks, uh, keep the right logs, so we can revisit the decision when uh, when uh, when it's made. So to um, to to see a bit like how we can work on that uh, uh, process, and you will be also be taken care of in a sense that uh, it won't be easy for everyone to work with that conformity assessment. So uh, we will also um, propose some uh, tools for uh, companies to. Uh, uh, learn a bit uh, how to comply with uh, some of these uh, new rules, you know, with regulatory sandboxes, as we call uh, call them. That will also be uh, part of the proposals. What I'm personally also excited about is, uh, is also next to this uh, more, you know, uh, what type of AI uses should we uh, should we uh, think about carefully. Uh, I'm also really excited about like these AI uses where you can really uh, um, help uh, objectives like the Green Deal. I'm personally very excited about the potential of AI to help companies, governments, and citizens to make the most sustainable energy choice. Because an AI, you can you can program that model the way that you want it. Uh, I'm personally excited that it could also help really take decisions when is the most sustainable energy source available at which moment, and uh, when can I really use it. I'm uh, that is like something that we also asked for to be included in that uh, investment program that will be. Uh, uh, coming together with uh, the AI regulatory proposal, there will also be an investment plan for certain areas where we want to see European leadership, and this will be uh, one of them. So that will be uh, something exciting to watch out for. And it can help with the, with the broader question that you already mentioned, Oliver. I totally see that you know the energy transition in certain countries, uh, yeah, is still uh, on the way. Um, and my hope, of course, is that we can work with the digital sector to make sure that. Uh, when you to look at, for instance, the data centers as, as the current infrastructure that we're, that we're using, something will change, but the data centers is currently what we're using a lot, uh, that we can give them sort of like the primary access to the wind energy. You see that already quite some operators taking in responsibility themselves, and we need to see a bit for those who, are, who are, for whom it is a bit more difficult, how we can uh, engage in a dialogue uh, to, to make that happen. That is already on the way, because the, the, the data center and cloud providers already see this, uh, and uh, have already reached out to us with some, uh, yeah, uh, proposals. Uh, because my preference would be that uh, uh, the digital infrastructure starts uh, sooner than later, uh, indeed using that sustainable energy, so that the last remnant of the coal energy uh, is used, uh, preferably somewhere else where uh, it's a bit more difficult to uh, get rid of it. Yes, I, I fully agree, and that's really one important part. Um, of uh, a digital or a, and climate neutral ICT industry. Um, we, we see a lot of innovations, by the way, uh, in particular in Germany with regard to, for example, the use of heat wave of data centers um, uh, for um, the, the energy um, in the neighborhood where it can be used and the use of wind energy in data centers and all that. Um, the, uh, at least the German um, um, data center industry is very innovative in that regard and 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 leading um, compared to other European countries with regard to sustainable uh, and and uh, energy efficient operations of data centers. Um, I think this is, these are things that need to be well um, protected, need to be funded, need to be encouraged also on the, um, uh, the regulatory and political level uh, in order to make it attractive for companies to in, invest um, in, in such technologies. That's really um, important part of um, a, a sustainable transition of the economy. And apart from that, um, 
I think really we will we will see more and more data centers and digital infrastructure that we need in the future. All the more it's important that they can operate um, in a climate efficient way. Um, without um, infrastructure, without data center infrastructure, um, there will be no um, successful digitization. That is one very important message, in particular for the members of the Eco Association. Um, we have a very vibrant um, and active community of data center operators. Um, within um, the, the Eco Association. So I really believe that's one important part. And looking at the very ambitious project Gaia-X uh, in, initiated by the German and French government, um, that's infrastructure as well. Uh, and I'm very um, glad to see that this is a European approach because um, we, we really believe that um, only a European approach um, can help here for the European in the industry in general, um, well, to, to catch up, um, to find its way into the cloud and keep um, digital sovereignty and independencies. So um, infrastructure is really also one key aspect of uh, the development of the next years. Yeah, 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 like the, the, exactly, and I, I think that uh, you know, like we've all been living uh, through this uh, pandemic, and we're every even having virtual fire chats. You know, who who know could that that could exist? You know, like a virtual uh, fire chat, and uh, um, uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan, of course, of using digital technology. I'm also really looking forward to being able to hug some of my uh, family again when uh, when we see them. So some uh, physical uh, contact would be. Uh, Will be very welcome. No, like technology is, is is a fact of our life, and it will become an even bigger part of our life. And that that that's not only because we also want to see uh, Netflix, and, and uh, I'm also personally one of them that saw a bit more of Netflix than uh, than before because uh, <laughs> you know they, you have to do something uh, when you're at home, and um, yeah, everybody can 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 relate to that technology, a normal part of our life, and it will become an even bigger part of our life when we really want to uh, live in a in a in a smarter uh, way. So that's why I think it's very encouraging that you see this leadership uh, across the um, across the European Commission, because when it comes to the technology of the future, uh, you know, when we move also towards uh, edge nodes uh, in the system, uh, when we want to have the microprocessors, uh, some of them also uh, 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 produced in an autonomous way uh, over here, then uh, you see immediately that Breton and Vestager, the lead commissioners over there, say, oh, let's do this immediately in a way that we have uh, very energy efficient and actually climate friendly. Uh, technology, so invest immediately in the right way. I think that's a very promising thing. And then, of course, you have to uh, uh, see a bit what you do with the existing uh, uh, infrastructure, the data centers uh, uh, we've uh, sp we've uh, spoken already about. I think that um, some of these pacts that are being proposed are promising and encouraging first steps, and we will work uh, with them. Because to be honest, I think you know uh, people. Uh, um, I think energy efficiency and and uh, um, uh, sustainable energy uh, at, at a good uh, uh, price is something that uh, many people will also like because it uh, does is better for ultimately uh, your energy bill if you're also more uh, energy efficient. But it's also increasingly expectations that I just see from young people because like when I speak to young people um, who are you know also seeing a bit like we're confined we can't live uh, uh normally as we do going to parties all the time and some of them are still very active on uh, on on the green deal front and one of the things that they're really really very passionate about is this ecological footprint of uh, the digital technology that they use they're very passionate about that and um do expect that more will be done uh, there uh, including in the devices also the phones you know uh, to make sure that they last a bit longer uh, we can reuse them uh, parts of them a bit uh, better uh, so it's also increasingly something that your consumers uh, will expect from you because this is the next generation uh, coming away. Yes, and I think there's, that is fair to expect that. Um, however, I think it's it's very important to to see the overall picture, not reduce it to smartphones and apps only, because if you take the ICT industry as a whole, um, uh, that means that the uh, digital, uh, the um, ecological footprint that is of course there is compensated by a factor by five to, th to six in energy savings and reductions. Um, because of the use of um, such technologies, you mentioned AI, um, brings a, a huge potential of um, saving energy, of um, operating industrial processes, um, more uh, energy efficient, for example. Uh, you just mentioned some of interesting applications um, of artificial intelligence with regard to energy costs of, of different providers, for example. But also, if you if you look at all the industrial processes where AI um, applications are in operations, that leads um, to a much um, 
yeah, more uh, energy efficient industrial and manufacturing processes, which saves energy as well. Um, we can always do more, but I think it's very important for the overall discussion um, that everyone um, keeps in mind and takes into account that digital technologies, well, are part of the solution and important part also with regard to uh, a sustainable transition of uh, the economy rather than they are the source of the problem. I think that's the general well, uh, assumption that is very important for us. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think that uh, uh, the, the the starting point is, uh, is 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 pretty okay because the enabling factor uh, of digital technology is still indeed uh, very good. That uh, digital solutions can uh, can help us uh, make our energy system more uh, efficient. It can help us uh, to move around in the most uh, efficient uh, way and cut some emissions there. It can help farmers to actually uh, work with uh, technologies to. Uh, reduce pesticides, uh, use and uh, uh, work better with uh, the environment. So there are many of these promising uh, areas. We, of course, do need to prepare, be prepared also for the future where, um, yeah, you will have uh, uh, ever increasing uh, technologies with uh, ever increasing uh, uh, energy demands. You just need to be, be, be prepared uh, for that because uh, uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm only convinced that what we're seeing now is only the, the, the smallest tip of the iceberg possible in terms of uh, the deployment of technologies and we all need to make sure that we are prepared so that as i said later on like once you look back in this decade the thing that we've actually been doing is indeed uh, cutting the emissions elsewhere and not um creating new problems but i'm convinced that the sector is seeing that uh, because you see that uh, with the data centers who are um uh, a bit of a focus right now because 80 percent of what we're, what we're doing and using data is now currently there um it's moving, of course, but they, they, they've seen it and they've come forward to us uh, themselves with uh, plans how to tackle that, to uh, to buy more wind energy, uh, to make sure that, uh, but it's also very promising that some of the waste heat that's being produced uh, in the data centers can be used to heat homes and neighborhoods uh, next door. I think that's a really nice, positive proposition that you can make to uh, uh, citizens. And the next bit, yeah, the leadership that we intend to take is to invest, invest, invest also in these key technologies and to make sure that uh, wherever we can, we do that immediately in the most energy efficient way so that we, uh, um, yeah, so that we do something good uh, for uh, society. Uh, but again, no green deal without a digital deal. I think that is, uh, that's clear. Yeah. You just mentioned some of the feedback that you received from the industry. Um, I would be interested in how, how was the feedback in general when the green deal um, was um, published and proposed. Um, what was typical feedback, or how would you rate it as uh, the the overall feedback that you received, in particular um, from, from the industry on that? Yeah, like it, it, it's of course the green deal is 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 very ambitious because it connects really different uh, different dots. You know, this is really about making sure that you and invest in the energy grids of the future. But at the same time, in, ensure that you then immediately have uh, 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 electric cars or um, uh, other uh, clean vehicles to be able to use that uh, uh, energy infrastructure and even to make sure that the digital infrastructure, the digital layer, immediately comes on top to do it in the smartest way. So I think that industry normally really appreciates this um, holistic view and uh, uh, that, that we're trying to connect different dots. And investors normally do really like clear targets. They do like clear dots on the horizon. Uh, so they do appreciate, you know, like that, that we've set this overall goal. We want our continent to be climate neutral by 2050. And by 2030, uh, we want to cut our emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, at least by 55% compared to 1990. Um, they appreciate these dots on the horizon because then everybody can work towards a, a common goal. But then, of course, you immediately come to how do you then achieve that? And then you get into uh, discussions um, which part do you do with investment? Which part do, do you do with uh, regulations? That's completely normal that you have that uh, discussion. And in June, we will come uh, with a big um, climate package, uh, which will be a combination of like uh, uh, targets, uh, but also making sure that uh, there's some uh, enabling framework to make sure that, for instance, renewables can come to us a bit easier than uh, they currently do. So when you set renewable targets, of course, to, to set ambitious targets that are enough, but to also make sure that uh, you, for instance, um, uh, allow member states to work together to put offshore wind projects off the ground. So there's also an enabling part that is uh, there. So that's how I over would overall rate the uh, the industry feedback. They like uh, uh, the goals and the ambition. And then, of course, we constantly have to have a discussion to make sure that we do this in the right way, uh, because this must be done in a way that people are not left behind, but actually get on board. Yeah. 
speaking about ambitions and targets, um, you presented only a few days, a few weeks ago, the uh, 2030 digital compass for the European way um, into the next digital decade. And according to that, um, the assumption is that by 2030, three out of four companies will be using cloud computing services, big data, artificial intelligence, and the number of um, startup unicorns will have doubled. That's, that's the assumption according to this digital compass. Um, how does that fit into the general plan? And, and what do you think are the requirements that politics, as well as the industry, uh, needs to fulfill in order to reach such um, pretty impressive numbers? Yeah, I, th I think a lot of importance will go, but I'm also happy to hear your ideas of people like uh, on this call for like, uh, 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 or like sitting, uh, I don't know, uh, on the couch next to us at this uh, virtual fire chat. Um, because uh, this is a, a quick endeavor, uh, uh, sorry, like an ambitious endeavor. Um, I think that uh, one, one would have to put a real, um, um, one that would have to give a prominent place to the possibility for also countries to work together on some of these big projects, because um, it's best to, if you have these ambitions, to try and see how how can we shoulder this 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 together uh, across uh, different countries, and I think that is also one of the key things that the Commissioner Breton would like to see that you have more of these multi-country projects, as you uh, say, um, as he says, so that to make sure that uh, um, you invest uh, um, together uh, where where you can, um, and of course then the recovery funding uh, which will um, become available. Um, and we hope really before um, summer or like around summer uh, already, we have to take uh, still some steps to get there, but then that could really play a big uh, role because the recovery funding is supposed to be about us becoming uh, smarter and more sustainable to learn from the crisis and to uh, see countries working uh, together on it. So I think that's a big part of the uh, answer, but again, I'm very happy to, to hear also uh, ideas about that. I think that what you mentioned on the, unicorns and the scale-ups and the startups it's also extremely important because uh, some of these ideas actually really come from uh, players uh, like uh, that i'm always very inspired uh, by uh, what some of these um, uh, companies achieve you look like a company like bolt in uh, in estonia that was a unicorn uh, only a few years ago and now it is one of our main mobility as a service providers connecting uh, uh, e-bikes e-scooters and other forms of transport in many of our cities so uh, we need to learn from these um, um, companies as well, and they will probably ask us uh, to also make sure that uh, we do think a bit about uh, aligning some of the, uh, yeah, some of the um, national uh, frameworks to make sure that they can scale up quickly and have a European um, framework. But uh, I'm happy to hear some uh, ideas also on this. I, I really believe that startups are one important part of, of the game when we want to reach these targets, um, and that has a lot of aspects. Um, you see. Um, Again, coming from Germany, in particular in Germany, um, huge bureaucratic uh, burdens um, for young companies to establish their company, um, to have um, all the compliant mechanisms uh, in place that they already need at a, at a very early stage. Um, GDPR is only one example, but also the possibilities um, to invest in such companies and, and the legal tax environment for startups, um, that um, uh, is very important. To, to attract investors, um, equity capital to Europe, and to avoid situations that we see um, with many startups today. They may be founded um, in Europe, but once um, if you, you need a certain amount of money um, to reach the next step, um, in many cases, you see investors uh, not from Europe, but from the US or from the Asian market, because um, there is more money, there are other um, frameworks and um, regulatory uh, requirements um, for investing uh, in startups. So I think that is really one important part. I'm aware of the fact um, that tax legislation um, is not subject um, to the European level. Um, however, I think it's important to foster um, startup and innovation friendly um, legal frameworks. That's one part. Um, I think another very important part is the ability um, to transfer digitization and digital applications in particular into the medium um, and small sized um, entities and those are the ones um, who are sometimes struggling they don't have research and development departments um, they are in many cases coming 
um, well, from, from the old economy um, in industrial processes, um, um, a, a lot of parts of the um, industry where digitization is not so much on the forefront. And, and I think if we want to uh, be successful in transforming the industry or the economy into a digital economy, we need to pay particular attention to those parts of the economy and make sure that we have a knowledge transfer that we bring medium-sized companies in the situation um, to learn about digitization, to be able, um, well, to, to have the knowledge uh, and the manpower to use and to implement, for example, artificial intelligence. Um, that's where um, the money comes from. That's where we um, have all the employees. So um, as we all know, that's the heart of the European economy. So we need to pay particular um, attention to these companies. Yeah, like, uh, and uh, I, th I think what is what is also helpful there is like, uh, I, I was trying to find, uh, look it up, but like, uh, I, I can't find the exact uh, uh, number right now, but there is a specific ambition on the unicorns also in, in the digital compass. And I think that's a good thing to do because then you sort of sharpen the minds of everybody like, oh, we've set this target to increase that number. So then what, what do we do to uh, facilitate that uh, and that 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 is in itself um, very important and it also just requires making sure that you do your digital agenda in a way that that it can work for everybody like if you look at these three key key ingredients to make this uh, digital transition also happen like the infrastructure the data and uh, well and then uh, AI for example um, yeah and if you want to uh, make make sure that 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 reaches everybody and everybody's chance to work with it you need to make sure that you roll out your digital infrastructure uh, to start with also like in the more um, even the more remote areas of, of the continent so that everybody, everybody can benefit from it it's not only the scale-ups but also the farmers you know you can you can you can talk about precision farming uh, and satellite systems that predict uh, predict when you need to water or use uh, pesticides until you weigh an ounce but if you haven't connected your countryside then um, there's no point in uh, in talking about it you need to connect it all first so the digital infrastructure needs to be in place that is really something that uh, the commission is very much on uh, on that uh, uh, ball to make sure it reaches everybody and then you need to make sure that also data yeah to the extent possible is, is also available for 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 um, as many people as as possible uh, uh, to 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 use it and uh, invent uh, things and there the common data spaces are quite uh, important it's something that i think is, is is really really very helpful as part of the digital agenda as well that you set up a safe framework for people to share data even across sectors uh, that they can do it via an intermediary that uh, they can trust and uh, that they trust that they don't compete them away again uh, once they are uh, uh, successful and uh, help them then comply indeed with uh, other rules like uh, data protection but to make sure that everybody can join uh, as much as possible these type of joint uh, platforms uh, so that nobody has to uh, figure it, uh, this out on uh, on their own so I think that that is like uh, uh, these type of things are really important to uh, to focus on because I think that nobody really contests the principle of, of rules like data protection. I think it's um, the ground principle is just like before I use somebody's data, I have to respect that I ask the person, is that okay with you? And I think that everybody agrees the principle that you should just in principle out of respect for the person ask, can I use it? But if your rules are very complex, you need to make sure that uh, uh, that that uh, smaller companies also get uh, get help. So that's why. We also really um, uh, also uh, uh, our cabinet also asked for that uh, in in the college uh, uh, process uh, for some of these plans that we uh, need to that, that to make sure that you also have uh, associations uh, trade associations that can help uh, um, can help SMEs to uh, to master all of this. Yes, uh, indeed, I, I believe that the associations play an important role. Um, we are um, just now operating a project um, that is funded by the German um, Ministry of Economics, um, where we do exactly that, where we transfer um, artificial intelligence solutions into small, medium-sized um, companies, um, and that, that that's really important. So, um, yeah, we 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 need um, to take an eye on that. And let me let me ask another question with regard to the um, industry strategy of uh, the European Commission. Um, I believe it was announced to update the strategy last year, which was difficult, of course, due to the pandemic. Um, how is the work going on in that regard? Um, is there a timeline for the next update? Can you elaborate a little bit about what you're working on and what, what potentially the update will, will bring on news on that strategy? 
And the planning is still to uh, to come up with that uh, before the end of the uh, the end of the month. And uh, uh, I think that it was also natural to have it to never to have another look at it because the industrial strategy, as you know, like uh, that we have, was presented in March, which was the exact month that we all went into uh, well more or less lockdown. Uh, it was really the month where we started like uh, being uh, um, uh, confined more in our in our homes. And then next innovation EU happened. Uh, the recovery plans, which uh, uh, which had many lines for the recovery, also to make the recovery uh, sustainable and uh, green and and digital, and then it's natural that you already update your industrial strategy on that basis because you you came out with a document that um, didn't take account of like the main political lines for the recovery plan. So I would expect some alignment in that sense to take place, and that is like something that um, your sector uh, can only benefit from because, uh, as you know, the recovery uh, approach. Uh, the general approach of Europe to the recovery is really, uh, yeah, to make sure that it's uh, green and digital. So if people can tick two boxes, have a digital solution that cuts energy use of uh, uh, or or uh, allows them to make cleaner choices, or projects that immediately make sure that our digital technology is very energy energy efficient, those are winning propositions because they tick the two boxes of the um, of the recovery. Yeah. Good. I, I would also be interested. To, uh, uh, sorry, like I would also be interested in knowing, like, uh, what was a bit like. I think it's very uh, interesting what you say that you're working on a project to help SMEs also work with the AI solutions. What What are the main uh, applications that uh, that are that are that are that SMEs are like uh, using? Uh, um, in this case, it's a project that is focusing on um, small companies um, in in the handcrafting sector in um, um, this craft craft work in in a, in a broader sense. Um, mm -hmm. where, where you have a lot of potential because this is um, a sector that, well, is very far away in many cases from digitization and from the use of AI. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the project is called Service Master and, and, and the goal is to help um, in particular this part of the economy to, to make use of such technologies. Yeah, yeah, nice because like and important because the Green Deal, but people people tend to forget that because the Green Deal is of course about the climate targets, but it's equally about the use of resources to make sure that we make the best use of resources possible, and even also like uh, yeah, uh, how digital twins can help us to uh, to to make the products like uh, even in a better way. So that sounds like uh, something uh, something promising. Yeah. Thomas, welcome Thomas, back. Uh, I, I know you have a lot of questions on your list as well. So um, please, happy happy to um, have you back in the discussion. Yeah, I, I did not want to interrupt. Uh, and uh, it, it's been very interesting to follow. And uh, you, you also had the, the, the same question I was about to ask to Daniel, Daniel about the industrial strategy, which we uh, expecting for, for next Wednesday, as long uh, as there is no uh, no, no postponement. Um, I don't know if Daniel, you heard anything, uh, or we, we're still up to expected for next week. Yeah, I didn't hear anything uh, otherwise. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, other other than that, maybe um, uh, a question to Daniel uh, we received from the audience um, on on concrete examples. Um, what should, for example, Germany do to achieve the EU climate neutrality goals for ICT industry until 2030? Um, also referring again to the exit of the coal as key energy sources planned for 2038 in Germany, um, as uh, Oliver mentioned in, in the beginning. Do you have any? Yeah. Yeah, but and and that, that that that's a very good question, a very very good question because it allows me to to also like uh, emphasize something that I uh, perhaps didn't online underline enough uh, uh, before because when you talk about um, an ambition to cut your greenhouse gas emissions by at least fifty five percent in the next decade compared to nineteen ninety, uh, what you're really talking about when you want to see digital the technologies helping in that effort, you're really talking about stuff that is already there and needs to be scaled up, you know, because this is a decade. So you're really talking about scale up of, of technologies. And I think that um, when you look at uh, uh, where the, the lifting needs to take place uh, to cut these emissions, like there are a few sectors that really stand out as having uh, um, a bit more work cut out than others and uh, that need to uh, uh, showed a bit more of the uh, of the uh, of the responsibility, and that is uh, uh, energy, uh, transport, and um, agriculture farming. Uh, those are like uh, three sectors that stand out as making additional efforts. So, like that digital technologies that help to cut emissions there in the next decade, 
those are very promising in terms of uh, uh, what to focus on uh, 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 if you look at uh, you know how can digital help for the uh, the climate targets and when it comes to the big energy vendor in uh, in, uh, in 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 germany um again it's a bit like what i what i said already before um digital technology can help to bring the renewables to the right place at the right time uh, if you if you have smart energy grids uh, they can sort of you know wind farms can predict now is the time to put the renewables in now it will be used that is of course very promising and can also help a big country like germany to uh, master some of this to bring it from north to south and uh, and in all uh, in all uh, in all uh, directions physical infrastructure still needs to be there too eh? like i'm not underestimating the challenge of like still having to make sure that the energy grid is is, is there uh, i'm just now mainly focusing on the role of uh, technology so um that is i think is a, is a promising area also to look at under the uh, under the climate again agenda and again my hope is really that we can work with the digital sector that they are one of the first ones to actually use the uh, the renewable energy because a lot is again i I repeat that a lot is already on the way there are many companies already saying i'm taking my responsibility and buying uh, the renewable energy so i hope that the digital technology sector can be a bit of a front runner there and when there are any obstacles to that then we're very happy to to learn that because that's also what i've been saying to these uh, digital providers infrastructure providers that already came out with a plan for this a, a draft pact yes what you can expect them from us is that when we treat this almost as a sectoral roadmap almost as your sectoral roadmap to make this transition uh, we need to be talking about the things that you can do, but we also need to be talking about the things that we can do um, in terms of uh, making sure that um, some of this can be uh, some of this can be pulled, uh, some of this can be uh, done in a smart way. We're happy to also enter in a dialogue with the member states. You know, um, put your infrastructure in places where there's easy access uh, to renewable energy. It's very easily said. But it's also really, it's also complex to do, and that's why we have to do all this lifting together because it involves also the digital sector following a bit our plans, what we do with offshore wind, and involves us being conscious of the plans in in uh, in the rollout of digital technology. So it requires quite a lot of effort, but I think with a lot of goodwill, uh, we can get there. And I think that if I can speak for the highest political leadership in the Commission, which includes my boss, Executive Vice President Frans Timmermans for the Green Deal, but also Executive Vice President year for digital that leadership is there uh, to to make sure that we uh, master the twin transitions uh, together yeah i think uh, it, speed is essential i mean ideally we would have done it uh, uh, already yesterday or the the day before and uh, yeah uh, infrastructure and everything um, is is another point i think uh, also the, the the development looking probably also at hydrogen and and and, and other um, um fields of of, of uh, development um I, I think what we what we see uh, at the moment um one could say luckily or the the, the small good thing that uh, the the uh covid pandemic uh, pandemic shows um is that the the co2 emissions uh, emissions uh, are are going down um drastically and uh, so we were kind of fulfilling the targets we've we've set um to to achieve um right now but it's a temporary measure um may, maybe directed a uh, question directed to the both of you what, what how do you think we can have this temporary achievement of um an improvement in in um in, in co2 pollution and and um things like that um make this permanent how, how can we transpose this achievement into making it permanent I don't, I don't think that everything will go away once the pandemic is over, or at least um, we have overcome this situation. Um, if, if you look at um, uh, everything that happened with regard to working from home, um, I believe, and, and that's what you hear in every company, that there will be concept in the future to also, um, after the pandemic, um, allow people to work from home. Um, there are concepts um, in, in, in many, many companies for that uh, that are in preparation or already rolled out. Um, I do not believe um, that everyone um, will stay at home if they don't have to. Um, but I think we will see a, a change of culture in how we work. Um, so and if at least in the future people work from home like uh, two days or, or even one day instead of five days in the office, 
um, um, as before, um, that would be an achievement in particular also with regard um, to, to the energy savings um, that are combined with that. And, and the same counts for business trips. Um, I, I don't know when I um, had my last flight, like uh, all, almost uh, six or seven months ago now, while I was um, traveling two or three times a week before the pandemic came. Uh, and I'm, I'm very convinced um, that this will, to a certain extent, stay because um, we all have experienced um, that online conferences, video tools um, like our event here today that under um, other circumstances would have happened in Brussels, um, of course, um, that these formats will stay. Of course, uh, we will also get back, and I'm uh, very excited about that, um, to normal meetings and meeting people in person. But I think also in the long term, business trips will be reducted and we will not come back to the frequency that we saw um, in the past when many of us were traveling for a one or two hour meetings um, um, just, just for one day. I think that really doesn't make sense anymore in terms of cost, uh, in terms, but in particular in terms of sustainability and energy savings. Yeah, like, and, and I also think that uh, what we have is uh, uh, the, what we have currently, like in 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 this in this still like uh, heavy lockdown in uh, many countries, will of course not be like the picture that we will see once 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 it's opened up uh, uh, again. I do think that people uh, are will be keen to to travel. And I'm amongst these people. I'm amongst the millions of people that uh, one of the first things I will do is. Uh, to travel and see my loved ones in, uh, in 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 my home country that I didn't have time to to, to see, and also to help my kids discover uh, new things like physically and not just um, uh, online. So that will uh, that will come back. But what I think is very promising is that we can build on something that is makes us it's something of the most most of human stuff of of humankind. I think that this crisis has again shown that no matter the odds. No matter the adversity that we face, the human creativity to find solutions to keep on living really cannot be beaten. I think that when you see cities uh, seizing this 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 opportunity to reinvent the way that they move the people around to have more uh, bike lanes and integrate the bike lanes into uh, uh, offers in uh, with public transport and other means of transport and one digital offering. Uh, you, you see people like, you know, I just want to continue living and I will find creative ways uh, to do that. And I think that really makes us humans. And that is really, again, the confirmation that you no, know, this will be a hard challenge, the, 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 the move to climate neutrality. And it will be tough. It will be hard work. But we have lots of human creativity uh, to build on. And that is something to, to, to seize upon, that we keep that momentum, that uh, we all uh, sit back and like, oh, look what we can achieve when we can do it together. And... Um, that is something to build on, and then indeed you can talk about like some of these things that Oliver also mentioned. I do also believe that some people uh, will, uh, that many people will be continuing teleworking. But uh, let's not forget, most of the crisis we we ultimately did innovate ourselves out of it, and we were creative. So we are uh, humans, and that we can still be proud of that. I think that that sounds like the the perfect finish, uh, the the perfect words uh, to to finish this conversation. Um, thank you again to to both of you, Daniel, for your time, Oliver, and for for this conversation, for this talk. Uh, something we've not tried before, but uh, I think it worked out very well, and um, I, I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, thanks to everyone for watching, and um, if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to send them to us as long as the form is online or uh, send us an email or check out our uh, webpage um, at eco.de. And uh, other than that, have a good day and thanks again. Thanks. Bye, Daniel. Nice meeting you. Thanks, Oliver. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.